Welcome back to our second lecture, BC 213, The End Times. Um, yeah, so during the break, uh, we just did a quick uh, search online and uh, found out that um, Indian soldiers fought in World War I, World War I, along with the Allied forces um, uh, against the Ottoman Turks to set that area free. So that was the involvement of the Indian soldiers at that time, World War I. 1918. All right, so let's just pick up where we pause, just to give a little bit of history to the regions that we have been talking about, and then we'll get into uh, studying the scriptures. So, so we're talking about a little bit of the history of um, Israel as a nation, 1948. Israel became a nation, next major thing, 1967. The, um, the Six Day War, Israel captured the old city of Jerusalem. This was became this was very significant. They got um, control of the city of Jerusalem, and then uh, in um, uh, as as an outcome of that, there was um, a, a resolution made that part of the the east part of the city will be given to the Arabs under Arab control. The western side would be under Jewish control. Um, there have been other battles that have happened, um, a lot of attempts to establish peace in Israel um, in its relationship with the Palestinians. Uh, that's been an ongoing effort, and um, we've seen over time different efforts made uh, trying to establish peace uh, in the Middle East. And, and we are aware of you know the current conflict that's going on and uh, efforts by uh, the United States or European Union to trying to get bring some sort of uh, understanding for peace. For example, the, the most recent thing that's happening is um, President Biden proposed, you know, let's create Palestinian state, give them their own place. That was the only way for peace. Prime Minister, Netanyahu says, no, 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 we will not do that. I will not give Palestine, you know, a place for the Palestinians. It will all be under uh, Israel's control and so on. So we don't know how, how this is, you know, what, what's going to happen, but that's that whole effort of how do we bring peace in the Middle East, that's, that, that still is going on. But just highlighting a few things that are that are uh, biblical re relevance. Um, uh, Israel becoming a nation, the regathering of people into uh, that land has been something that has been foretold in Scripture. Isaiah 11, verse 12, God says, You know, I will assemble the outcasts of Israel, I'll gather them from the four corners of the earth. Isaiah prophesying, Okay, I'm bringing them all back. Ezekiel saying, You know, uh, Ezekiel 36. 36, that I'll, I'll multiply all of you, um, I'll bring you back, I'll, uh, cities will be inhabited and rebuilt, and um, they will take possession of the land, I'll bring you from the nations and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land, Ezekiel 36, 24. So God foretells that I'm bringing back you back to your own nation. And all of this happened in, in just one, you know, in, in, in almost like a suddenly in a day and Isaiah says you know who has heard of such a thing shall a nation be born at once as soon as Zion was in labor she gave birth to her children a nation was born right? so the establishing of Israel as a nation is something of uh, of great significance and importance for us from a biblical perspective um, now what we are aware and if you see the, the map on page uh, 39 um, Israel has a large control of a large part of this land, but there are regions, what we know as known as the West Bank, west of the River Jordan, West Bank. And then there's a Gaza Strip. There's a small portion on the western side along um, the Mediterranean Sea that are occupied by the Palestinians. And that is where a lot of conflict is happening. Right now, the Gaza Strip, that's where, you know, uh, Israel has been bombing, trying to get rid of the Hamas, the Palestinian uh, group. 
And so the ba there's conflict going on, and that small piece of land is causing so much of problem, you know. And uh, West Bank, that's where Palis other Palestinians are, and Israel has been trying to, you know, reoccupy portions of it, uh, put up their own settlements and so on again. But Palestinians want this as their own land, want to be identified as an independent sovereign state. So this is where the troubles are, uh, trouble is going on, and then the focus then is on Jerusalem, right? So in Jerusalem we have, um, um, so uh, Jerusalem, Palestinians, Gaza, West Bank, just give you some information here. So if you look at Israel, just a tiny little nation surrounded by several other Arab nations. And uh, uh, page 41, uh, uh, we're highlighting those regions where there is conflict going on. Now, the points of conflict, the Temple Mount. So this is uh, what we had mentioned earlier. For the Jews, it goes back all the way to the time of Abraham. Because on Mount Moriah is where Abraham offered, or he brought Isaac to be offered as a sacrifice. David bought that mountain, made a sacrifice on it. And so on that mountain, Mount, where Solomon built a temple. So it's a very sacred place for the Jews. But it's on this place where the Muslims have their um, uh, their mosque and the Dome of the Rock. So uh, around 86, 85, page, top of page 42, there is the uh, Dome of the Rock and also the Al-Aqsa Mosque that has been built there, um, uh, established there. So if you look at uh, a little picture of this, I think you're on page 44, um, you can see the in the center of the Temple Mount is the Dome of the Rock, and towards the wall is the mosque. And uh, so this whole Temple Mount has both these structures which belong to the Muslims. And then on the western wall, uh, so you can see the picture of the Dome of the Rock, on the western side, that is where the Jews are allowed to come and offer prayer. They're not allowed on the eastern side of the mount, of the Temple Mount. So that's on page 45. You have some pictures of them coming and praying. So, this whole Temple Mount has become a point of conflict. And as we look at Bible prophecy, there has to be a third temple built here. Because we say third temple because first temple was built by Solomon. The second temple was the renovated temple that was rebuilt by uh, during um, Ezra, Zerubbabel that time. So that was destroyed. So now on this place, a new temple has to be built. We call it the third temple or the millennial, uh, or sorry, the, yeah, the third temple. Uh, the millennial temple would be the one that's cleaned up and uh, set aside afterwards. So right now there is no temple. But there has to be a third temple because the Antichrist is going to go in here. First of all, he's going to allow the sacrifices to resume. And then he's going to come in and he's going to stop the sacrifices. And he's going to make himself as God. Right? So how is all this going to happen? Uh, we don't know. All we can say at this point is the Jews are ready to rebuild the temple. They have everything ready to put up the temple. Uh, but as of now, on the Temple Mount is the two uh, Muslim structures, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And it is not going to be easy for anything to happen there.
you know it's it's uh, so it's it's a very tense situation very difficult situation another thing to uh, keep in mind is the jewish settlements um, um, so once israel came back to their the jews came back to their land they started rebuilding the re establishing rebuilding their cities and rebuilding all their their homes and so on and what is interesting and again um, people who study all of this can uh, will explain it jeremiah 31 38 to 40 uh, jeremiah had prophesied right that the city will be built and he mentioned how, the sequence in which things would be rebuilt the tower of hanel the corner gate or the hill garab the valley fields the brook kidron horse gate and what um, you know people have observed this or followed how the settlements have been built uh, they tell us that the way israel rebuilt itself across the land took place just in this same order right so um uh, uh, so this is again an amazing thing that the way jeremiah prophesied in the same way uh, everything was rebuilt in the land in this order okay so that's something interesting something to keep in mind and the settlements are going on here so the relationship between israel egypt and syria is something to uh, uh, keep an eye on right now things may be tense um uh, is, is is on high alert on all sides because north side there is lebanon and syria south there's egypt west there's jordan iraq iran so it's always on high alert because any of these nations could attack uh, against but when you look at into the future um, uh, Isaiah 19 talks about Egypt turning to the Lord a highway connecting Egypt and Syria Isaiah chapter 19 and Egypt Syria Egypt and Syria are uh, becoming friends with Israel so this will most likely be fulfilled during the millennial reign of Christ, when Christ reigns, that all these things, all these nations will become friends with Israel and this highway will be built. So that's in Isaiah 19, right? And uh, for us, uh, how should we look at Israel, you know, at the church, Israel and the church? And how should we look at um, Israel or Zion and Jerusalem? So I've just given some notes there uh, on page 48 and 49 that we understand that right now God is working through the church and the church is ministering to the Jews and the Gentiles the church is made up of believers belonging to the Jews whether they're Jews or Gentiles and we are preaching the gospel to the Jews and to the Gentiles leading them to Christ and God is making of both one new man Jews and Gentiles are coming to faith in Christ the uh, the um, uh, the tribulation period will see a lot of focus on Jerusalem and Israel and what happens with them uh, during that time. And so when we go through Revelation, we will see how God is working through um, Israel or in Israel as a nation, what has been prophesied. So keep in mind that God has not given up on Israel just because he's working through the church right now okay so we are in what we call as the church age the emphasis is on the church but it doesn't mean God has said Israel bye bye no he's still got a plan for them he's still going to do things for them as a nation okay so just keep that in mind and so as a church we pray for the peace of Jerusalem we uh, reach out to Jews and Gentiles with the gospel of Jesus Christ okay okay uh, what uh, what the Bible has foretold this is in page 50 what the Bible has foretold about Israel that Jerusalem will become a trouble spot uh, there will be a peace treaty for three and a half years uh, of false peace uh, and we will go through this as we look at the series of events and how they will happen I'm just giving this as a preview and um, then there will be the great tribulation during which uh, God will do things in and through Israel. And then everything will culminate with the battle of Armageddon and the second coming 
of Christ and during uh, during the millennium Jesus will reign out of Jerusalem and from there he will um, uh, govern and rule over the nations we'll go into through these details in the coming chapters okay all right um, chapter number four okay Bible prophecies of coming world events so what we want to do now in chapter four is to start is to get a good picture of um, the sequence of events what is going to unfold okay and uh, then we will all, as as part of this we will also do an overview of the book of revelation we'll just go through revelation uh, chapter by i mean just giving an overview of uh, what is going to happen but let me just introduce this topic today and uh, we will continue this um, next week so if you look at the chart so this is a chart we will refer to often. And so we are right now in what we refer to as the church age. Right? And we're coming to the end of the church age. So the next major event that's going to take place is the rapture of the church. Okay. So the big question, when will the rapture of the church take place? Will it happen? before the tribulation or in the middle of the tribulation or at the end of the tribulation right so our position is that the rapture of the church will take place before the tribulation and we will give many reasons as in the same chapter as we go forward why we say that why do you say biblically right why do you say that the rapture of the church will take place before the seven years of tribulation we'll give reasons for it Okay, but that's a big area where people have questions. Why do you say that? We will have the reasons. So the rapture of the church will take place and the believers will be taken into heaven. Right? Those who have died before, uh, we will all receive glorified bodies, will be taken into heaven. Seven years on the earth will be seven years of tribulation. We will be in heaven and there will be things happening in heaven. Right? And uh, we will look into detail. What will happen in heaven when we are there during the seven years? At the end of the seven years, and so and 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 what will happen here on earth during those seven years? Book of Revelation, journey through it. Hmm? End of those seven years is the battle of Armageddon, Revelation chapter 19, when Christ and all of us return with Jesus. So that's the second coming of Christ. So when we say second coming of Christ, we are referring to the um, so for the rapture of the church, we will call it rapture of the church. But second coming of Christ, we refer to it when he comes at the end of the tribulation to establish his kingdom here on earth. The rapture of the church um, is his secret coming. Because everybody won't see him. He'll be in the clouds. The Bible says we will meet the Lord, uh, we will uh, meet the Lord in the air. So he's not coming onto the earth. We'll be meeting him in the air, in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But second coming, he's going to come, he's going to set his foot on Mount Olives, he's going to establish his kingdom right here on earth. Okay. That happens at the end of the Seven years. So we will look at scripture for all of this. Okay, I'm just giving us an overview, an outline. Now, during the seven years of tribulation, there will be many people who will believe in Jesus because they will read the scriptures, a lot of things. Yeah? There will be the preaching of the gospel that will happen on the earth. They will believe, they may be martyred, they will also be raised. Those who have died during the tribulation, believing that they'll be raised. And we will reign, rule, reign and rule with Jesus for 1,000 years. During this time, Satan will be bound. He'll be taken out of the way. So this is referred to as the millennium, the 1,000-year reign of Jesus. Jesus will rule on the earth for 1,000 years at this time. At the end of the 1,000 years, Satan will be loosed for a short period. He will try to deceive the nations once again. 
and uh, God will he'll go attacking Jerusalem. God will intervene, and Satan will be bound uh, and cast away into the lake of fire forever. Right? And at that time, every person will be raised, and then we have what is the great white throne judgment. That's the final judgment, the great white throne. Then we will all be taken out of the way. So the believers will be taken out of the way into heaven. All the others will be sent to the lake of fire. And there will be new heavens and the new earth. Everything that we know, the, the universe as we know, new um, the current heavens, current earth will be dissolved. And God is going to make everything new. And we will, uh, we have a li little insight into what this new heavens and new earth look like in Revelation chapters 21 and 22. Okay, so there will be new heavens and the new earth, and we will, you know, uh, uh, heaven will be established here on earth. The city, heavenly city of Jerusalem, will come down to the earth. We will be here. Okay, so we're going to look at all of this in detail. Okay, so let's pause here. We are going to now, so that's the overview. So what we're going to do from next class is, we're going to look at each of these step by step. We're going to read the scriptures. Okay, look at the scriptures for each part of this and try to understand how it's going to happen. And we will also journey through Revelation, give you a little insight about the outline in Revelation. Okay, to help us understand the sequence of these events. And we'll answer questions along the way. Why do we say, you know, rapture happens, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We will answer questions as we go along. Okay, so let's pause here. Any questions on just uh, what we talked about? We did a little bit of geography, which areas to think about, a little bit of history about how Israel became a nation and some of the important wars. Uh, we don't have to study Israel history in detail, no, just to have some idea. And then an introduction to the overview of events, but we will get into the details uh, scripture by scripture. Any questions for today before we pause? Okay. So let's close in prayer. I know we are finishing half an hour early, but uh, you can uh, relax for half an hour. Let's pray. Somebody could pray and we'll dismiss. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord. <clears throat> we come to your presence, Lord. And thank you what we have learned today, Lord Jesus. And give us understanding so we can learn deeply more, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for us, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. So next week, we get into the details of uh, the sequence of events. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye.